Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Friday, May the 22nd. I'm Pastor Jim Krieger from Holy Cross Lutheran Church and School here in Saginaw, Michigan, and coming to you today with the devotion that actually the circumstances around us throughout Midland County, Saginaw County, places north, places south, are all dealing with as a new reality for a little while, especially with all the floodwaters and the incredible amount of damage that has been done to homes and uh, land in the country and city infrastructure and just the incredible inconvenience to the lives of many that have to drive almost two hours just to cover a distance that would have taken 20 to 30 minutes. So in the devotion today, I looked for something that went back to what was probably the most devastating act of water on the earth, Noah's flood. And I'd like to read a devotion today that focuses on the word of God that comes to us in the midst of events just like these that many of us and those we know and love, family and friends, are facing. The Bible verse first begins with Genesis 7. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him, and Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Here are five lessons that we can learn from the account of Noah that we still can live by today. It begins this way. If you aren't convinced that God's word still matters to you today in your life, then let's go back to one of the oldest accounts in the Bible, the account of Noah and the ark, and see if all of its truths continue to stand the test of time. We are all going to be shocked at how the living, breathing Word of God speaks so clearly to each of our lives today. First, we can grieve the heart of God with our sin. God is a good Father and He loves His children. Just like any good father, our disobedience and sin grieve the heart of our Heavenly Father. In Noah's days, the people were so wicked that God's heart was deeply grieved. God was grieved by sin then, and He's grieved by our sins today. He can't just ignore them because God is also a holy and righteous God. Genesis 6 says, the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on earth. Every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. Second, God always provides a way for us to begin again with him. God must judge sin, but he is also merciful loving, and full of grace. He will never leave us without a clear way to come back to Him. God wants a relationship with us and is always willing to go above and beyond to provide a way for that. Even throughout deep sin and a worldwide flood, God provided a way for Noah and his family salvation by providing them with the safety of the ark. He is willing to do the same for you today. It's never too late for new beginnings because it is God who provides the way. We continue with words from Genesis 7. In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day all the springs of the deep burst forth, and the floodgates of the heavens were opened, and the rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. On that very day Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, together with his wife and the wives of his three sons, entered the ark. Then the Lord shut them in. The third point, we will not always understand God in his ways, but we can always trust him. Noah must have wondered if God's plan was the best, because after all, a worldwide flood seems very harsh. However, God had an eternal plan in mind. He knew the sinful state of the whole world. It was self-destructive, but God loved the world enough to intervene. His plan ultimately provided a way for you and for me to know salvation. God always sees the bigger picture, so we must trust Him even when we don't understand the circumstances around us. 
Isaiah 55, verse 8 says, God reveals, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The fourth point, we can obey God even if the world thinks we're crazy. Speaking of things that are hard to understand, Noah himself must have faced a lot of opposition. People must have been so unkind to him and laughed at him day after day as he built this massive ark when it had never rained like God told Noah that it would. But through it all, Noah obeyed. He held fast to what he knew was right, and God rewarded his obedience. Sometimes obeying God means believing and doing things that the world around us doesn't understand and may even make fun of us. But we know that God honors all who obey him. Genesis 7 again. Noah did all the Lord commanded him, and Noah and his sons and his wife and all his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. And fifth and final, all things are possible with God. As Christians, we believe that the Bible is 100% God's word. Therefore, it is always truthful. It is inerrant, meaning there are no errors. And it is always applicable to our life today. It is timeless. It is trustworthy. And that means we do believe in the biblical account of the flood that covered the entire earth and even the highest mountains for several feet, just as God's word says. We also believe that God warned, God instructed, and he protected Noah and his family. And God loved his creation enough to send even animals in the ark to protect them. God is able to do far above what we know, what we expect and even understand. That was true of him then, and it's still true of God today. He did it in Noah's situation, and he does it in yours today. Ephesians 3, beginning at verse 20 says, He is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. Even in these difficult times, my friends, especially here in mid-Michigan, with the absolute destruction of those floodwaters, with the waters while receding, leave so many roads under, so many homes surrounded and filled with water, so much destruction. In the coming days and weeks and months, we will still see the signs but every day we see the sign of God's love. We see the sign of his faithfulness. We see the signs of his compassion. We see that God truly is love. And he provides for us and for those who need it. He provides also through us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being our loving, compassionate, merciful God. Especially in these days when it doesn't take us far to travel to see the devastating waters of the flood that are still overflowing the banks of our rivers. Gracious God, we aren't just filled with thanks that our house is safe, even though we are thankful for that. But we are thankful that you provided safety for those who needed to flee their homes, and for some have been able to return to their homes and see there was little, if any, damage. But Lord, there are just too many people that are not going to return homes, uh, they're not going to return to their own homes without seeing the devastation of the waters. Entire livelihoods washed away. Gracious God, it is for them that our thoughts and our prayers are foremost, because we know there are ways that we can reach out to them, praying for them, calling them. What can we do? What can we provide? Do they need a place to stay? We can do all of these things and even more than these things, because you have given us a heart of your love to have your mercy and compassion for others. Gracious God, we thank you that the truths of the Bible are as relevant today as they were the day you spoke them to your people, the day the words that you gave were written down. Your word is timeless, it is holy, it is perfect. In a word, it is good. 
Bless and keep us as we continue to follow your word, being guided by it so that we can continue to be a blessing to others. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear children of God, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and in the cleansing, powerful, holy name of Jesus, give you peace. Amen.